This is a sermon from St. Paul's Church, Brookfield, Connecticut, transforming lives through Jesus. For more information, go to www.stpaulsbrookfield.com. Today's message is about friendship with God. Friendship with God. In our world of social media, what exactly is friendship anymore? Back in 2009, when Facebook was really just starting to have an effect on our culture, Burger King launched a campaign directed at Facebook users where they told the Facebook user, if you unfriended 10 of your friends, you'd get a coupon for a free Whopper. It was called the Whopper Sacrifice. <laughs> and the idea was that when those 10 friends were unfriended, they would all get notifications telling them why, and they would have to think to themselves, that must be some hamburger. <laughs> well, this gimmick worked too well. Within a short amount of time, over 230,000 friends had been unfriended, and Burger King was on the hook for over 23,000 free Whoppers. They dropped the campaign then. <laughs> what is a friend today? We have many friends online, some of us, but when it comes to friendship for the Christian, what does it mean to be a biblical friend? What does it mean to be a friend with God? What does it mean to be friends with other believers? That's what we'll look at this morning. And our Lord Jesus really tells us directly how we become friends with him. If you keep my commandments. You are my friends. So it's conditional, but let's look at the full context of this. First of all, in the Hebrew Bible, the word friend also means secret. Notice Jesus says, everything I've heard from my father, I've now shared with you. This is very Hebraic. So to be friends with another is to share in the secrets of the heart. That's the understanding of biblical friendship from the Old Covenant. And while friendship was not something often described in terms of one's relationship with God, there were moments where people were described as friends with God. Abraham, long after his life in the New Testament, is described as a friend of God. What do we know about Abraham? Well, he was in this intimate communion with God listening to God, walking with God, taking risks with God, and failing before God, and being restored again and again to fulfill God's purposes for his life, and for all those who would follow him, including all of us who represent the seed of Abraham. Moses was described in Exodus as a friend of God, and that he talked with God as one would talk to a friend. But these were rare instances we know that God is described, rightfully so, as almighty, holy, sovereign, majestic, and yet there's this intimacy that God has called his people to all along, even going back to Genesis in the garden where God walked in the cool of the day looking for humanity as they were hiding. We could say that God was longing for friendship even then. What makes Christianity unique is that while a lot of religious figures throughout time have left their teachings and said, therefore obey, Jesus left himself and said, I'm with you always, follow me. Do you see the difference? That through giving his Holy Spirit, he promises to be with us in everything we go through as our friend. This is why during his farewell discourse, which we just heard from John's gospel, Jesus is telling his disciples what they'll need to know and how to be friends with God. And Jesus will show us that he is the only true friend who lets us in and never lets us down. He always lets us in and he'll never let us down. And we know that as much as we would like to be the kind of friend we're called to be. We do fail. We sin and fall short of God's glory. And the psalmist knew this. 
Just consider these heartfelt cries from the psalmist. In Psalm 41, the psalmist says, My friend, the one who even broke bread with me has turned against me. We know that our Lord Jesus experienced this personally with his own betrayal by Judas and then the other disciples who would scatter. But this does not stop Jesus from saying, I now call you friends. In Psalm 55, the psalmist says, my very friend, the one I walk through the temple with, has become like an enemy. We all know betrayal, and we ourselves at times have been betrayers. And Jesus, knowing this, still calls us friends. But there's a journey to friendship. It begins with servanthood. It begins with obedience. Jesus is very specific about this. If you keep my commandments, that is how we become friends. And so we could say that by obeying God out of perhaps fear of God, that certainly shapes outward behavior, but it's only through friendship with God that the heart is changed. And that's what Jesus invites us into is a heart change. As he says, I'm with you. Follow me. That's the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives today, that God chooses to dwell with us, to make a home in our hearts, and to call us to be friends as we obey, and as we're inwardly transformed, to be friends with God. We're on this journey together. Some of us might still be focused on serving only and that outward behavior is being shaped, but remember that we're on a journey of friendship together become friends with Jesus, and that means friends with God, and to become touched deep in the heart, and to know that Jesus is the one who will always let us in and will never let us down. Even when we struggle as friends with each other to be that way, we can trust that God is at work making us the friends we're called to be. The University of Virginia had a study not long ago. They took 34 college students and they set them before a very steep hill. And on every other person, they put a heavy backpack. And the person next to them was a friend. Some of them were left with the heavy backpacks without a friend. And each person was interviewed. And it turned out that the person who had the friend next to them described the hill as less steep than the one who didn't have a friend. It's not a profound study, but it tells us something that to have a friend by your side might just make all the difference in terms of whatever it is you're facing. Whatever steep hill you're going to climb. And we all have those challenges and those hills to climb before us in different ways at different times. And oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. And as we're filled with his spirit, and as together we serve him and keep his commandments, to lay down our lives for one another as he has done for us, we can be that friend to stand with another and to look up and see that with God, all things are possible. It's God's heart to let you into the secrets of God. This is why Jesus came, to die for us, for the forgiveness of sins, for all those times that we've been betrayers of our Lord and one another. And rising from the dead, he promises to make all things new, even the renewal of friendships. And as he fills us with the Holy Spirit, he gives us the grace to stand, to stand with one another as together we take the journey of faith, that holy pilgrimage of servanthood, which is transformed into true friendship with God. And the fruit of this experience of friendship is joy. Last week, we looked at the fruit of love as the branches connected to the true vine. This morning, we look at the fruit of joy. Joy, which is simply the deep conviction that Jesus is with us as our friend. That no matter what we come up against or what comes at us, he's there. He'll always let us in and never let us down. 
And he'll shape us in our hearts to be his friends and friends with one another, to go through this world together, to know joy, and to have that joy be in us and to be complete as only our Savior can give it. So I believe the call for us this morning is to be people of even greater love. Greater love has no one, said Jesus, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. He did this for us. And he continues to call us to do this for one another as we're called to. By putting others first. By loving one another without limits. By forgiving each other. By recognizing our own struggles and faults and recognizing that we all share that together. And so in that proverb, 1824 says, There is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. We can believe that this is Jesus, our almighty God, and at the same time, our friend and our brother and the joy giver who longs to capture your heart and to fill you with everlasting joy. May we be called to greater love and always deeper friendship in Jesus' name. Amen.